Hello everyone, and today after we finished with the electromagnetic waves and the, the main function for them, uh, electromagnetic waves sometimes referred to as uh, electromagnetic radiations, their main function is transfer energy through distances. And uh, you know the equations, uh, the energy e is proportional to the frequency E equals H, the Planck's constant multiplied by the frequency, and that unique relationship between the frequency and the wavelengths. When you multiply these two, you should have a constant called the speed of light. We would like to now extend that concept into really start uh, into looking at the uh, arrangement for the electrons. So let's start talking about it. in this case with Bohr's model of hydrogen. Take the simplest atom of hydrogen and uh, this is what we learned so far and as you say you've done um, you've seen those in a class as a demonstration discharging tubes and we apply electricity through those vacuum tubes containing different elements and you see through the three-dimensional uh, glasses you see those characteristic lines it's called emission spectrum emission spectrum is when those elements Uh, excited in this case by electricity and they give out very very characteristic bands the lines of light as you remember each line corresponding to a wave length and that corresponding to a specific energy it's correlated with that particular line also you've done in the lab is the flame test Remember the color for the barium, potassium, sodium, calcium, and the zinc, and all the host of others are lithium and uh, 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 strontium. All this you've done with it very repeatable, and uh, it can be used to actually identify the elements. So you can see like the light coming out of the excited, what we call atomic entities, atomic entity including the atoms and ions okay including atoms and ions and it's very specific for any given element and it's quite reproducible and uh, let's repeat it again and uh, the light coming out of being absorbed by the atom indicate the very specific energy changes within atomic entities and also there's no observation of any alpha beta or uh, beta radiation coming out of it and also no gamma rays coming out of it so there's no change in the nucleus as we will learn you have what we have here is the structure of the atom everybody knows you have the positively charged nucleus surrounded by electrons okay so in this case nothing to change the nucleus so logically what we are observing here with a very specific emission spectrum and specific color has to come from changes of electrons and it has to be very specific it has to be very reproducible so for the classic model for the classical model of atom and uh, we reproduce that uh, call up the pen you have positively charged nucleus and electrons pretty much could be anywhere it wants to be however immediately issue starts to surface with this model it's a couple of issues as people learned the charged particle in this case electron moving through is called the electric field in this case generated by nucleus will emit light 
And because it's anywhere he wants to be, and any kinds of energy he wants to be, the emitted light as the consequence from the classic model should, from the classic model, the emitted light should have all sorts of wavelengths and consequently frequencies. So what it should be coming out is as a white light, as in the sun, the whole spectrum. But however, that is not observed. So the classic model cannot hold water here. So what to do? And uh, in the early 1900s, Niels Bohr, a Danish, a Danish physicist, he came up with a model that is absolutely revolutionary, and uh, he actually opened up the door. Later on, we're going to call it quantum mechanics. He is trying, as everybody else, to explain the emission spectrum, specific line, specific line, specific energy trans, uh, energy transition, and also very reproducibility nature of it. He came up with a radical model, as shown here, right in the middle. This is a positively charged nucleus. And this one is specifically shown for H1 atom. And uh, as you can see, this is the simplest atom. You only have one proton as the nucleus and one electron surrounding it. And remember this number one is the atomic mass number. If hydrogen has one proton, and one proton plus zero neutrons equals one mass number. So this is the simplest one out there. So the radical part is uh, those concentric rings. This one, that one, that one. And uh, he gave a name, kind of a little bit of fancy name. It's called orbits. It's called orbits. Orbits is nothing but it's nothing but merely calculated energy levels. So it's called calculated energy levels. As you can see, this is the lowest energy level. As a progressive, you move out from the nucleus, energy goes up. Energy goes up. His revolutionary idea is just like this. If you see this blue ball, that's an electron. Those electrons can only be on those orbits predetermined energy levels but not in between in case like this not allowed in case like this not allowed in case like this not allowed so now electrons cannot be anywhere they want to be electrons have restrictions put it on them they have to be on those orbits when the electrons are on those orbits Electrons will assume the energy of those orbits. As you can see from here, if an electron is located on n equals 2, you have higher energy than the electrons located on n equals 1. How is this excited electron going to get back to the ground state? Oh, it's that one thing we'll talk about. This is called the ground state. So this is called a ground state of electron. How is going to get it down to there? The key features for the Bohr's model is the energy difference between the orbits, which is the electron has to unload, has to be carried out by the photon, has to be carried out by this photon, guys photon. And it is the critical linkage between the energy states called orbits and the light coming out of the hydrogen atom. We're gonna, uh, we're gonna, it is uh, such a bizarre and uh, radical idea 
took a while for people to accept that. And literally took me a while to accept that because as you can see the physical world we are experiencing is what we call the continuous. You drive a car, the car is going to move from zero to twenty miles an hour. And it has to go between all the speeds in between zero and twenty miles an hour. But now his idea, both ideas is equivalent to saying no no no, that's not going to happen. Your car is going to move from zero miles per hour to jump to five miles per hour, then jump to ten miles per hour, then jump to twenty miles per hour. There's nothing in between for those any of the speeds. Okay? Don't panic. It's hard to grasp. We're going to do more as we progress. Okay, just remember a little bit reiterate. So now the electrons have restrictions put on them. It cannot be anywhere it wants to be. It has to be on some specific fixed energy levels. Just using a, a analogy, a ladder, ladder would be a pretty good analogy for Bohr's model in terms of energy, in terms of energy. As you climb up the ladder, you have increasing in energy. So you will have <coughs> nucleus as the floor. The first step will be the first energy level that will be called the ground state. And as you move up, all those is called excited state. It has higher energy. Further away from the nucleus means more energy. And there's no in-between energy levels. That's why you use uh, n equals 1, n equals 2, n equals 3, n equals 4, n equals 5. See, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, those are all integers which means nothing between is allowed. Okay. So here clarify some of the uh, concepts we've encountered. The called about quantum. Quantum is a quality of energy gained or lose by an atom when electrons are excited. Photon, photon is another thing to talk about, is a quantum of light. It's, uh, pack of energy coming out of the atom and uh, serve the purpose of transferring the energy out. The ground state is the lowest energy level of an atom. Excited state is a high heightened state of energy in an atom is any energy state higher than ground state. And also introduce the concept of orbits. Orbits is nothing but merely calculated energy levels. It has a fixed amount of energy in the ground state. It has a fixed amount of energy for every level, and it moves higher as the level moves away from the nucleus. Or, uh, you know, further away, you will have higher energy. So let's uh, do some uh, calculation, because Bohr says he knows he actually has a formula for the various energy states or uh, energy levels we he calls orbits his formula uh, his equation is rather simple it's caused like e en equals minus 13.6 electron volts divided by n square n is equal to one two three four five and the electron volts it's an energy term and there is a conversion 6022 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. All right, so it's in essence, let me reproduce Bohr's model here. And you have those concentric rings around the proton. We'll call it n equals 1, n equals 2, n equals 3, n equals 4. Let's draw another one. For the sake of it, n equals 5. Those are called orbits. And according to this formula or equation, E1 should equal to minus 13.6 electron volt divided by 1 square. That would be minus 13.6 electron volt. E2 should equal to minus 13.6 electron volt divided by 2 squared. Don't forget the square 
and 3.4 electron load. E3 minus 13.6 electron load divided by 3 square equals minus 1.51 electron load. E4 equals minus 13.6 electron load divided by 4 square equals 0 minus 0 0.84 electron load. E5 is minus 13.6 electron load divided by 5 square equals minus 0 0.55 electron load. Let's pause for a second and double check on those numbers. Okay, upon further checking, I did cut a uh, mistake, and uh, that's uh, the last one should be zero uh, minus zero point five four four electron volts. So now we actually have uh, numbers associated with those orbits, and you can see this one will be minus thirteen point six electron volts. The next one up minus three point four electron volts. The next one one up. 1.51 electron volt and then equals 4 0.84 electron volt and the last one is 0 0.544 electron volt. Let's get a fresh page and so we can discuss a little bit more. Let's reproduce the Bohr's model and quickly right here you have the nucleus that's the proton so then you have all those orbits. So now you have one, two, three, four, and five for the ends for the ends. So you have for this is a minus thirteen point six electron volt. For the second minus three point four electron volt for the third is minus 1.51 electron volt. For the fifth is minus 0.85 electron volt. Last one minus 0.544 electron volts. And if you have here, if an electron is sitting on n equals three, is trying to get to n equals to two then it has to lose the energy, right? And now how much of that energy you're going to lose? The amount of energy you're going to lose from, this is called a delta, 3 to 2 will be equal to E3 minus E2. And from this case, you will have minus 1.51 electron volt minus minus 3.4 electron volts. And remember, it's important to write it out. The minus minus will be becoming a plus. So this is going to give you 1.89 electron volt. So the energy difference is this much, 1.89 electron volt. The key idea is that energy has to be carried out by a photon. Has to be carried out by a photon. And that photon takes the amount of that energy and going, take it outside of the atom. So in this case, the energy of the photon equals the energy difference between these two levels. That is the foundation for Bohr's model. This is the basis for Bohr's model. And as you can see, the differences in energy levels, we call orbits, has to be taken care by the photon. So now you have critical link E photon. You can bring in all the relationships. It's proportional to the frequency of the photon and also because the relationship between the wavelengths and frequency of the photon multiply that product of that 
it's a speed of light so you can actually derive this one hc divided by lambda photon h is the Planck's constant c is the speed of light and you want to solve i'm not going to go into detail repeat it before and now is here you have to say is hc divided by e photon okay and uh, h 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34 joules per second multiplied by 8.0 uh, i'm sorry that's not correct it should be three 3.0 times 10 to the 8 meters per second you divide it by 1.89 electron volt in this case you have to convert it to joules 10 to the negative 19 joules per electron volt and I'm going to save some space you can work out the numbers and it actually turns out to be 656 nanometers okay 656 nanometer. you also need to use one meter equals 10 to the ninth nanometer in this case so we have a nice calculation as i will show you in uh, okay let's go 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 pee good job good job Alex, Alex. The next slide, and uh, it's kind of a fairly busy, but it clearly it's very nicely summarize the Bohr's model. It's a nicely summarize the Bohr's model. As you can see, you have the orbits one, two, three. And the four and the five and the six actually keeps on going. Theoretically, it can go on forever. Each one of the orbits will have energy associated with it. It's all going to be calculated like this. It's minus 13.6 divided by n squares. The energy difference between the energy difference between the orbits, the delta E, will be picked up by the photon. So hence the H nu and also lambda equal equals c divided by nu so now you can have as what we did before and you can calculate there's a red line 656.3 nanometers that's what we calculated you can calculate the n equals 4 to a equals 2 jump a equals 5 to a equals 2 jump and you can jump a equals 6 to a equals 2 jump each one of this has a very specific wavelengths associated with it and it is very interesting to know here showing here is a hydrogen emission spectrum and i will show clearly in the next slide in the next slide there's one red line right centered around 656 nanometers subsequently you'll have all those lines as corresponding to the various transition as specified in a Bohr's model so the theoretical work the proposed Bohr's model exactly match the experimental the hydro observed the values for those lines on the hydrogen emission spectrum so Bohr's model is the was the first ever model that accounted for all the emission lines in the visible spectrum for hydrogen atom so he in essence that's in a way to support it the emission spectrum of hydrogen supported Bohr's proposal and it was widely accepted to quickly summarize you learned in this uh, section for Bohr's model of any atom you have let's quickly reproduce that and I like to use pictures to represent it you have the concept orbits 
orbits with which predetermined calculated energy levels. And those are the orbits. And transition of electron between those orbits involves involve change in energy. And the change in energy essentially is the difference of orbit, the difference of energies associated with each orbit is from N2 to N1 has to be accounted for by photons. Okay? So the energy is being transferred in and both in and out of the atom via photons. So it's the successful in accounting for most of the hydrogen emission and absorption spectrum lines however It only works for H1. Helium for kaput doesn't work. Is that I wrap up the instruction? Check on corresponding homework assignments for further exercise. Thank you very much for your attention.